Thank you. Good day, everybody. Today we have have our uh, education system uh, session with uh, Angela, leadership and human skills expert. Over to you, Angela. Thank you, Alan. Okay, so you all know that I, or you may know already, that I have um, done a couple of sessions before, and I, mine, I, as a trainer, I can't stop myself. I have actually layered the learning. So if there's something that you're missing, where when I talk about something, chances are you'll find it in a video beforehand. So have a look at that, um, and I'll keep referring to what I've done already because um, they are short videos, and you might find them useful. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, all right. So, what can you see the my my screen? Yeah, you see your screen. We can see the slideshow. Okay. There we go. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay. So today we're talking about needs and what they are. We're talking about how needs and emotions are connected, how to manage needs and the needs of other people, and then if there's time, some questions. So you may wonder why we are going to talk about needs, but um, you can't really imagine your life without in, without needs. And so a need is something that is necessary for an organ, organism to live a healthy life. And the emphasis is on healthy. So it's, it's, it's the one thing that helps us survive. At the bottom of needs are things like water, food, um, sleep, and all of that. But there are more many more needs than that. And that means that um, we have... We have needs for um, achievement. We have needs for connection, and all sorts of other things. So here is just a few. Here just a few. I can send you a whole list of needs if you want, and um, and there is again they, the list is endless. There are physical needs, the emotional needs, the spiritual, the mental needs. We have needs in every area of life, and we're pretty good at suppressing them. And the need, the reason you know when you're not feeling your needs and when you're not meeting your needs is when you're feeling off. So these are all the so-called unpleasant emotions. As you know, I don't like the word negative because every emotion has a positive intent. So there is no negative emotion. There's just the ones that we really don't like feelings. And then they are the ones that we're pushing down. So you might feel bitter. You might feel jealous. You might feel resentful. There are all of these emotions that we feel when our needs are not being met. And specifically when we see somebody else meeting their needs. So when somebody says, I don't know, I'll give you very basic examples. I really want to do that and I don't care what you do. So I have, for example, I, I was attended a dinner the other day and they were two people had decided to celebrate their birthday together and one person had decided that she wanted to go to a really expensive restaurant and pay for everybody coming there, but not for the people that her friend was bringing. And so that there was a real conflict between needs. It's the, it's the same thing that you have in business when one business partner wants something and the other wants something else. If you don't negotiate those needs, it can get very hostile. You might feel really drained and exhausted and you may find that you don't want to talk to that person anymore because, you know, you're not getting what, what's important to you. So when you don't fulfill your needs, it's the equivalent of turning off a hose. So you put a kink into the hose. Needs flow all the time. You, you cannot live your life without fulfilling needs or in this case, stopping your needs from flowing. So you need to unkink your hose in order for things to flow again. So the problem that we have is when we talk about needs, we often are considered to be selfish. And that's because this, the focus is on the self. Then so in order to sub, to function in the tribe, we are supposed to drop our needs and be selfless and focus on others. When we do then focus on ourselves again, we become really needy. And then we expect others to fulfill our needs. And then the opposite, of course, is I am completely needless and supp suppress my own needs and expect others to do that for me again. So these are generally the way in which we act out our needs. So you may find that, again, you will want to be really selfless and give to other people, but because you're not getting what you want and you're doing it from a sense of obligation, you will start feeling really resentful or burnt out and not really feeling, feeling happy. So this is a word I'd like to introduce because it's going to come up over and over and over again. It's a, it's a term from psychology, as Neville will be able to tell you. It's called the locus of control. And there's an external locus and an internal locus. And the external locus is the one, as you can see from the gray t-shirts, that's not really functioning. And that's the um, and that's where somebody says, you know, somebody else needs to fulfill my needs. 
Somebody else is in charge of my emotions. Somebody else needs to fix my problem. So none of this originates inside of me. Everybody has more power over me than I do. Whereas an internal locus of control means I am in charge and I believe that I determine my life and how I manage my needs, how I solve my problems and how I create outcomes. And that's a very big difference. So I, I would invite you to, to have a look at what happens when you get into a situation. Where do you see the, the, the cause? Where do you think somebody, where do you want somebody to fix your needs, your, your neediness, whatever it might be? If, there come, if you get that sense of blame, it's probably because you've outsourced that responsibility to somebody else. So there's a big difference between caring for and caring about. So we, we're supposed to care for people and especially in business. You know, as a leader, we have that duty of care. But care for means we come from that parent-child point of view. It's my job to fulfill your needs. But an adult fulfills their needs from a place of, I help somebody else fulfill their needs, but not from a place of responsibility. I just support them. So this is in one of my previous videos. So if you want to have a closer look at that model, it's all in there. So the, the idea is that you really notice when you are starting to rescue somebody in business as a needer, which means that you take their needs very personally and you really want them to be, you know, you want to be the person who fulfills their need. So just remember, they're adults. They already have a mom and a dad. They don't need another one. You don't need to micromanage them. You do not need to take care of them and make sure that their problems are helicoptered or snow plowed out of the way. Your goal as a leader is to, to, to support people in becoming independent and competent and be the next generation of leaders. So the earlier people learn how to take care of their needs, the more the, the quickly you can make yourself redundant. And that's your second goal as a leader. So if you're not fulfilling your needs, this is one of the previous ones. All your emotions will get to that place of where you're either feeling fine, everything is okay, and then chances are, and I'm saying this with a with a with some sadness, is that you will see people going to you will read obituaries where people are praised for their ability to be there for everybody else, but but never for themselves. So they were really safe, selfless, but they're often some people who are very bitter. And um, or really, really disheartened or really depressed. So there are all sorts of ways in which these elite emotions can um, can can um, indicate that needs are not being met. Alternatively, people explode. So when your needs are being met, you will feel inspired. You feel appreciative of other people. You may feel curious about what's going on. You will definitely feel motivated because, again, it's coming from the inside as well. So it's your ability to make sure that things happen for you, through you. So as we already said, what doesn't work is being selfish, being needy, and being needless. Selfless is a different story when it comes from that place of really wanting to give. But that's when next week's topic comes in, and that's boundaries. So selfing is a new word that I like, because if you're wanting, if you'd say to somebody, just be a little bit more selfish, they go, oh, I can't do that. That's a really bad word. So selfing means you know how to self-care. And being needful means you recognize and express your needs that are necessary for your well-being which means you know what matters to you. And I, in my experience, a lot of people do not know what they need. As I said, I've got a really great list of needs and emotions that I'm happy to send to you where you can have a look and see, this is how I'm feeling right now. What need am I meeting or not meeting? So feel free to connect with me on that. So when you fulfill your needs and when you've unkinked your hose, then all of these needs can flow and you can be empathetic. So you can be there for other people. You will also enjoy your own company you will have, you know, comfort, you will build trust with other people, and there are all sorts of other needs that you will fulfill. So when you when you manage your needs and emotion in life, it's a really important to know that this, this manage this is really important for your relationships, for your health, for your career, for your inner peace, for your purpose, for your spirituality, and for your willingness for your growth mindset. So you will be willing to stretch and grow when you fulfill your needs and overall for the quality of your life. So I can talk to any of those topics for a few hours, but we're leaving it at that for today. And the importance as a leader in business is um, that, that um, 
again, this is a very high overview, but you enhance your performance because if you don't coming from a sense of dejection, regret, um, resentment, or that sense of I need to take care of other people for the detriment of my own well-being, you can actually enhance your performance. You can make better decisions. You become stronger. You become more resilient. And what you do is, is you definitely improve relationships because adults, true adults, really know that they're in charge of their own needs. And so, therefore, they will want to step up. This is, again, this is all about wanting to be competent and autonomous, which are two crucial human core needs. So if you have, if you have people working for you that want to be autonomous and they want to be competent, they will, they will put the boundaries in place and then you will have much better working relationships with them if you support them in helping manage their needs, but not taking care of them. In other words, you become a really great healthy role model. And we need we need those. We need a new generation of leaders who know how to manage their emotions and their needs. And of course, you will have increased energy levels, which will give you lots of time and and space for work and but also for your life at home because work life integration is just so important in a world where we are twenty four seven connected. So overall, greater sense of fulfillment, which is why we also talk about fulfill your needs, and that's it for today. And I would love for you to do my quiz and learn more about what it is that I do and um, have a chat with me. There is a half hour complimentary session attached to this and it might might show you a little bit and I can give you some feedback about how you um, how you are going and where you're doing well and where maybe you could you would benefit from a little support. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for that, uh, Angela. Yeah. Now, I've done uh, quite a few sessions with Angela. We talked a lot about the emotions and things. What she's covered is something worth following up. Make sure you put the uh, link, Angela, into the chat box for the people to the I did. It's something I'd recommend that you all have a chat with. If you've got any questions, just put your virtual hands up and we'll go through and uh, you can ask so Angela any questions you've got about this. But I would like to bring up, first of all, you talked about selfish and selfless. I think when we look from somebody else's point of view back at ourselves, we see selfish as selfish and we see selfless as being um, uh, self selfless, giving to other people. But if we look at it from our internal, selfish becomes selfless and selfless becomes selfish because we're helping other people, giving them what you know they need something and we give of ourselves all the time and wear ourselves out. We actually end up robbing them over time because we're not giving them our best. We deteriorate. Yeah. So being able to be, as you, you know, you said people have problems with word, being selfish to be selfless. If I look after myself, get myself up to the best level I possibly can, then come back and help other people, I'm going to give them more when I do that. And I'm not going to rob them by giving them an inferior version of myself. Which is why I call it selfing, which is, you know, you give to self because selfish is so badly mm. represented. It's just, you know, it's really, it's really hard. Yeah, I think with the words that we use, that has a massive impact on our emotions as well. So I know you've covered that in other talks as well, making sure that we very careful about the words that we use. Uh, Dr. Chris. Um, yes, thanks. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Angela. Uh, that was a great presentation. And it's good to be reminded of how, how much, how, how we, we need to think about ourselves, um, but not in a selfish way. And um it's and and as Alan says, if if we can't if we can't look after ourselves, we can't look after other people. And and a lot of what we do as coaches, I'm sure all of us, um, is to help other people. And um, you know, and there's there's a there's a level of of gratification in that that I suppose can be viewed as selfish, but it's it's uh, it's just the the sense of of <clears throat> of achieving that help for that person. That that's fantastic. So. Uh, but yes, it's very easy to default back to, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I've got all this stuff to do, I can't spend, spend any brain space on myself, I'm looking after myself. Um, so it's, it's it's so important to be reminded of that. Thank you very much. Anybody else with any questions? I'll just stop the recording. <laughs>